about that countdown and everything. Interesting. Again, this is like, it's been a while since we've seen a Diana in 2v2s. Especially like, I don't see a lot of bow in 2s, but this weekend we've been seeing the bows come out. Of course, we saw the Kaya earlier. We've been seeing Azoth. We've been seeing all sorts of bows throughout the weekend. Yeah, we saw some Vector yesterday, and that's a beautiful bow uh, character. I think that the Sig Pack on that character is very nice. And I'm, I'm liking that we're seeing a lot more representation, especially now that the, the uh, Lance is more powerful. Oh my goodness, and the reach on that one, Akno, the immediate side tick to give the blue team a solid lead. Akno, he's looking a lot better on this Diana. It's kind of an odd pick, not something we're used to seeing from Akno as he gets another the recovery at the top of the map. Took that one sky high really fast and almost returned the favor. Heisen was not able to complete it, not enough damage. And there we go, over the top, Pavelski able to clean that one up. They need to finish off the stock of Blaze to keep this one even. Blaze fighting it out on the uh, right side against two and made it back safely. Yeah, and uh, Blaze is still holding on to that stock. Got this team looking really nice right now. Got the Rayman, uh, one of the characters I say is definitely top three. I was saying it was the best character in the game, but easily. <laughs> I mean, I think we know Mordex is the one, but get the dunk right there. Blaze even it. Wait, hold Ooh. on. Wait a second. Did Blaze just create a huge uh -oh, lead what? for his team? <laughs> Pavelski. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Heisen made that lead even bigger, came over, tried to give a reprieve, but instead just ground pounded Pavelski. And now Heisen and Pavelski on their final stocks. Blaze still sitting on that first stock. This blue team is looking very good to take game number one. Blaze's health is redder than Heisen's hair. <laughs> they finally got the stock out of there. And then let's see, man, I don't know. This is a tough one. You let them create such a large gap in the in the stocks Ooh. and health okay gets a clean up on Akno. now what are you gonna do get play some damage no the team hit on the gravity cancel yeah they were going for the power play maybe just stacked up a little bit there and blaze not gonna get taken out there's still an opportunity if this red team can collapse onto Akno, but Akno is starting to take names as he is swinging and a couple big hits and the red team is gonna be out of here man uh Akno is doing whoa the gravity cancel caught on like the no last one. active frame two time two time i love it he got both of them out of there with the snatch of rooney and threw them back i love that logic of like i like this sig it just hit let me just do it again yep <laughs> that was perfect and the first one on the gravity cancel just it barely skinned him like it just caught the last little active frame it looked like here we go Suka? <laughs> that was too good Whoa, he did it three times. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to just keep doing this. It's a good SIG. It's definitely a good SIG. And we're seeing the swap come out from this red team. Heisen liked the gauntlets but didn't like the axe, so he's going to make the swap over to the Val for game number two. I understand it. The legend, I mean, the gauntlets, you stick with those, right? Because gauntlets are just an insanely powerful weapon. And now you still have Sword. Sword is just the bread and butter of Brawlhalla. It's been doing its thing for a long time. I mean, you're, you're on Val. It's, it's nothing else to really say. Val yeah. is a great character, and she's going to get the job done. It makes so much sense. I mean, these are all solid picks for 2v2s. Kind of the odd one, again, is that pick from Akno on the Diana. There's some solid logic, right? Bo's just all around favored right now, and Blaster's great for setups, but uh, it's looking even better. Left side, no one gets taken out. Right side, Akno with the down stick is going to get the first stock. Man, I'm telling you right now, if you expended like a couple of your jumps, that thing is very powerful and will get you Ooh. out of there. What a recovery. Getting back onto the stage. Oh, oh! that was a good pickup. Uh, if, that, if I'm not mistaken, that was Heisen that came over there and landed the stair right before he was able to touch the side of the stage. Yeah, th uh, that was a really good side sig to punish the save attempt from Akno as well. Given this red team the lead, Pavelski, the only one still sitting on that first stock. That was really good. But as you're saying, we have the bow. The bow's been looking really good this weekend, and just as of as of late, it's already been a really powerful weapon. But the guns, the blasters, they're they're really really good. I, I mean, a lot of people think that they're not the best, but when you've got that, as Sandstorm says, unpunishable dare. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you can play some really good nooch. Wow, playing oh, with oh. fire on the side of the stage. Acno able to get back on. Yeah, I'm surprised he stayed out there. When you see those double exclamation points come out, you are running out of options. Big Dare takes out Pavelski. Opportunity here, and Heisen's going to fall. Blue team now with a solid lead as long as Akno doesn't fall. Yeah, Akno is probably going to hold on to this for a little bit. I'm going to call it, right? I don't think he's going to get caught slipping. <laughs> I was wrong instantly. Ooh, and going for the immediate power play. Blaze able to avoid that side sig, but the end sig 
Suddenly, red team with the lead. Man, that was a, uh, I see, that was commentator's curse instantly. Uh, here we go, on the side, tried the side signature, not gonna get it, leaked off the side and skinned the top of Diana's hat. Okay, you allow your teammate to get back up, both of them gonna make it up off the side, that was dangerous territory. Yo, but still some solid damage being put out, Blaze capitalizing on the saves from the red team to get that damage put out. Pavelski likely the target, he's the most damage between the two red team members, but he's still on that second stock. Yeah, but that's where you get into trouble, right? If you start pressing too hard for the damage guy and he's playing like kind of the move around, move and shake game on you, then now you're just eating damage while you're trying to get his stock out of there while the other guy's moving freely. Heisen going to be able to get some good damage out if you don't get Heisen out of there. You want to create the 2v1. Boom. Pavelski's going to lose the stock. Heisen in the skies. I think you can. Oh, good weapon oh. toss, but still the Nair touches. And Pavelski comes in, takes out Akno. It's all left to blaze in the 1v2. Even if he takes out Heisen, that is basically a full health Pavelski that he has to fight through. Yeah, and I don't know about that, Chief. Okay, almost sniped. Good movement. Ooh, that was some crispy movement. But the Sair coming out from Pavelski, those Red gauntlets will piece you up and throw you down. And we have a game on the board for Team Ray. Evening it up, one apiece. Solid plays all around coming out from the Red team, being able to kind of just like keep the blue team off uh, on their toes, right? They weren't able to kind of ground themselves and get their footing, get that damage built up instead. It was just like red team keeping that pressure. I like it, I like it. And like we said, this was gonna start off really good. Uh, I called for a game five and we're getting game five caliber gameplay, as you said, even if we don't <laughs> get to game five, but it's one one. We're gonna see who's able to turn the tides and take this next game in game three. Going over to Miami Dome, Heisen, no surprise to see him sticking with the Val. Val did so well, of course, 303 damage on the sword. So, of course, he was like, yeah, I want a sword for this one. Yep, yep. And look at the unarmed damage from Blaze, 104. That's actually a... Uh, that's a lot. Yeah, that's significant. <laughs> you see, in, uh, you'll see people put less damage on a weapon than Blaze just put in with the unarmed. But <laughs> offstage opportunity here, Akno able to get away from Pavelski. All right. We got the bow. Now, controlling the ground space, but your teammates getting terrorized. Akno had to intervene. Nice recovery. And back on the ground. Getting the hands from Pavelski out on the side. Nice Yo. job. Did that turn it around? Oh. Almost got the KO. Missed the, the down air. Eisen tried to come over, reprieve some uh, pressure, but instead ended up getting caught by the Nair. Akno swinging all directions, and Pavelski going to get the first stock of game number three with the recovery on the Blaze. Man, I'm liking the positioning that Pavelski's been playing. Good KO by Akno, but Pavelski has been playing very good spots to try to pick up or set up Ooh. for Heisen. Heisen, another recovery KO from Akno. Akno's been putting those on pinpoint. He's been so good about those. Blaster's recovery has so much movement as he decides to put some arrows in the blaze just for the heck of it. <laughs> All right, here we go, racking up a little bit of damage on the right side. Blaze able to sneak away from Heisen. Looked like Akno was going to come over and help out, so Heisen gave up on the pressure. And now, Akno's been off stage a lot. It's, uh, it's, it's looking like, I mean, I guess I get it. You don't want to deal with the gauntlets like that face up if you can't get the first strike, so you kind of just skate off and just wait for the situation to cool down a little bit. Off the stage, tried to get the conversion, but a nice Ooh. dodge by Heisen. Oh, my gosh. Yo, he's still living, too, Akno. With the Nair, Chase dodges, gets around the corner. He's still alive. Finally, the down air will finish off that first stock of Akno. Meanwhile, Pavelski lost that second one. Pavelski came over uh -oh. with that, that pickup. That's what I'm saying. Playing off of Heisen, got the pogo to solidify that KO on Akno. Here we go. It's a tight game. I like what we're seeing here. Recovery Ooh. and couldn't stop it. Not enough defense, not enough team help to save that stock. And now we have a lead from He's Team Blue, though. but Pavelski going crazy on the side. I love it. Fantastic edge guard. Blaze actually disengaged. He knows he's on his final stock here, so if he overcommitted, could have fallen. Meanwhile, Akno had that second stock, but now everything is even. Yes, definitely dead even. Look at the health. Even the health oh. is almost even. My gosh, you almost got taken off the top. That would have been dangerous. I bet you if it was the blasters, Akno got that. Akno's so quick on those vertical turnarounds, right? Like someone will hit him with a recovery. Blaze is out, though. Dominating. Oh my goodness, and you put your teammate in the situation, what? but the gravity cancel is hot fire. I love it. Akno doing what he needs for his team. Here we go. This is a 1v1 Heisen versus Akno. Oh man, these bo both super strong players. Heisen's uh, PR6, right? Uh, I think something like that. He is uh, 
very high PR, but he's going up against PR number one in the 2v2s. And uh, Akno has yet to find a hit. All right, finally gets a side light, but a turnaround from Heisen. Awkward spot. The weapon toss will deny the ground pound. That was a dangerous weapon toss. You get If you got a trade there, the weapon goes straight through. Heisen gets the KO, but I can't believe it worked out for him. Getting the uppercut with the unarmed, Ooh. and my gosh, look at that. The weapons have just switched. No bow in hand for Akno, sword for Heisen. Still going out there unarmed, trying to get this over with. Man, this is getting scary, though, both of them. Getting into the red, the recovery will do it. One slight misstep and Akno immediate dash jump recovery to take game number three. 671 damage, five KOs, put the team on your back. I love it. You love to see that. I know Blaze loves to see that. That gravity cancel was so good. Put it at the right height. And I think that if, if he stayed grounded, that wouldn't have hit, right? Um, well, the thing that's so good about that gravity cancel, right, is because it covers both options, right? It covered the grounded, which is definitely one hit, and then it also covered if he decided to panic jump into it. So it's just okay. a really solid option overall. Yeah, I thought I thought he might have jumped a little bit at the end there, but, I mean, he did look like he stayed grounded. So, hey, either way, that was just well, well set up. And like you said, PR1, Heisen PR5, that's what it was. Okay. I thought it was six, but either way it goes. Look at the damage numbers on both weapons, 391 with the bow, 213 with the blasters. Man. Six weapon throws. I mean, it's just a complete package coming out from Akno. Yeah, Akno looking so solid. I'm loving this swap to that Diana. But on the other side, Blaze is not feeling the Rayman. It was not able to do things that he wanted to. So at the bottom of the screen, you'll see he swapped over to the Koji. And Pavelski is going to be busting out a Val of his own. I like it. Okay, so we got double Val. And then we got the Koji in the building. You know? I don't know, man. That that might be a little dangerous. You put that low defense out there, and you, you're gonna have to do a, a. You're gonna have to fight two sword characters versus your sword. I mean, but the bow, right? So okay, we have double bow on the board. So that's gonna be a lot of ground coverage. I like it. I like it. It's definitely an interesting one. Usually, like in these tight situations, Blaze will make the swap over to the Olgrim, but instead, seems like this time he's the one who's going over the Koji. Wants that high dex. Wants that bow and that sword consistency. I like it, I like it. And I, and I will say, Woo. personally, I would look for the... Flash out. Whoa, whoa, oh, whoa. Oh. And he lives. Oh Pavelski. My. Both of them fall on the right side. Pavelski tried to capitalize, right? Like, Heisen was done for. He could either go on for the save or try to take out Akno with him, but got neither of them and instead fell. And Akno lives. This is a massive lead for the blue team. Yeah, that was crazy. That is not what you want to see happen if you're Pavelski and Heisen trying to get the KO over the top. But Blaze, nice movement, nice dodges. Still not enough. And you're still dealing with two, three oh, stock oh. characters. No, Akno falls shy. He did not touch the side of the stage. I know that one hurt. Yeah, I just barely. Barely skimmed the edge there. Didn't hold hard enough, but it doesn't matter as Blaze hits another side signature and Blue Team maintains their big lead. Big lead. And look at that. Heisen down to the final stock. Blaze still not able to get KO'd over the top with the unarmed recovery. Yoke him up and throw him back. Look at that signature. Another one Whoa. into a team. What? what? Hey, that would have been sick. That would have been amazing. He still lives, but the side sick from Heisen might be too much. Oh, wait. Did he touch? Doesn't matter. Pavelski with the down air to confirm it. Suddenly, red team starting to find their inch into this. Ah, drop the team combination. And Akno was going to stop it anyway, but she still could have got a little bit more with that second down air. Here we go. Yo, nice. Yo. Pick that one up. Okay, couldn't really get too much off of it, but they're, they're doing a good job. They're fighting back, and they're trying to get back in here. This is really good. Pavelski's still in the, like, orangish, uh, I mean, yellowish, gold, you know? So this is a good look, but you can't let your teammate Heisen fall right here. You've got to keep them both alive with the two stocks on Blaze. Man, that double gauntlet team combo is so hard to do, not only because it's straight horizontal, but also because you don't want to give them DI by doing the same move twice. But unfortunately, they couldn't capitalize, finish off with a KO, and the red team on their last legs here, one big hit could take out either of them. And I, man, that high ceiling is saving the day. Blaze has been sent up there a multitude of times, and it is just not happening. Here we go, sword in hand. Uh, neutral signature. Okay, it's not a one v yet. You got to get Akno out of here if you want to have a chance in recovery coming out from Blaze. Not enough. Weapon throw, and you are caught by a beautiful gravity cancel from Blaze. Oh, and that's going to be the set. Yep, convincing finish from the blue team. They just started off that so explosively that it was so difficult for the red team to come back. Here you see in that repeat, 
of a great punish from Akno, and then Pavelski not able to make anything out of that situation. It was good stuff from both teams. Oh, we, had, we had game five caliber, like you said. Didn't make it to game five, but very good set from both teams and still going to be able to fall down into that elimination bracket and have another chance to move forwards in this bad boy. But uh, Blaze and Akno playing exactly like their PR shows. Absolutely. And just like that, of course, a guaranteed top three finish for Blaze and Akno. They're going to be sitting in the winner's final chilling. Uh, they'll be going up against the winner of our next set which will happen in just a little bit. But for now, look at the damage numbers. Blaze, the swap over the Koji, he was able to put out a lot of damage in comparison to when he was on the Rayman just the game before. For sure.